Before 1850, British Columbia was just called Columbia. It stretched from California to Alaska, including the Panhandle. Its capital was Vancouver on the Columbia River. It was the largest settlement on the West Coast, governing over 30 communities connected by brigades. The New Caledonia Brigade, the California Brigade, the Snake River and Langley Brigades, all centered on Vancouver. A fleet of Vancouver ships served its coastal communities, including the first steamship, the SS Beaver. Vancouver was the original terminal city, with brigades coming and going from the Hudson Bay and Montreal. Its ships traveled to Honolulu and London with products from its farms, sawmills, fisheries, distributed around the world. Vancouver was the cultural center of the West Coast. It had the first school, with students from a thousand kilometers away, the first theatrical plays, library, hospital, the first teachers, doctors, supported the first artists and scientists of renown. Vancouver was the biggest industrial center, with shipbuilding, a foundry, mills operating through the night. It had blacksmiths, millwrights, coopers. Its farms, herds, orchards, an industrial bakery served all of Columbia and beyond. Vancouver had 35 ethnic groups. 30% were Hawaiian. A new native-based language, Chinook Wawa, developed in Vancouver and from there spread throughout Columbia. The first governor of Columbia was John McLaughlin, part French. His deputy was James Douglas, part black. Both married Aboriginal women and their families lived in the governor's mansion. First Nations people were central to the economy, providing most of the export goods, protecting the trading communities. A ban on missionaries in Western British territories and strict controls on European settlement helped maintain peace and traditional native cultures. U.S. efforts to establish a presence on the West Coast were short-lived. Britain extended its laws there, the U.S. did not, and it imposed foreign import duties. McLaughlin authorized intensive trapping near the eastern border, and American fur traders decreased from 500 to 50. McLaughlin outcompeted U.S. trading ships, which eventually abandoned the coast. For almost half a century, Columbia, this proto-British Columbia, sustained a multicultural society around its capital, Vancouver, living in peace with First Nations people. Its presence was so powerful that the United States and ambivalent British politicians had to accept the reality of a Columbia on the West Coast. To these people, we owe the existence of British Columbia. <laughs>